Hi, I am Dr. Yang Fang Zhang. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Harvard University. Today, I just want to inspire you to think about one simple question: How do fish swim? Right now, you are thinking, well, isn't a basic fish just born to swim? But when you really, really think about it, how do fish actually do it? How do they actually swim? And in today's talk, I want to walk you through how the science behind and what that means for our society. Fish is actually not that different from human. I like to call them fish athletes. So you see, like human, we can wear a face mask, measure our ocean uptake, and running on a treadmill. Fish can actually do a very similar thing. We can make fish run on a fish treadmill, and we can also put some apparatus around it to measure the ocean uptake from the fish itself. It's actually not too different from what we do in the human athletes. Little I know is that this is not a brand new research field. Scientists back in 1964 has been thinking about this question, and this is a diagram of this old, old fish treadmill. What this diagram shows is in the middle there's a fish here, and that's what we call the swimming section, and this huge, huge loop around it is where we manage the water, and there's a very powerful pump. To push the water around it, and goes up. There's a pressure regulator and goes through the, the flow regulator in front of the fish, and the flow will go through this fish swimming section. And one beautiful thing in these designs is not just have a closed loop to regulate water. That closed system is also sealed. That means there's no oxygen from the air. Can go into the swimming tunnel, so any oxygen being removed from inside the system is removed from fish itself. So that is an older day version of the fish treadmill, and it's what we call a fish swimming tunnel respirator. But how about the modern day version? Do you want to have a look of it? I guess the answer is yes. Here we are. This is our modern-day fish treadmill, fish swimming tunnel respirometer. We adapt the same design from the 1964, which will have a circular water movement system here, and there's a motor attached in the back. So when the motor spinning, it push the water goes around the circular circle here. What we advanced is the measurement techniques. One laptop here connect to the oxygen meter, so it's a tiny oxygen probe being inserted into the swimming tunnel and measure how much and how fast the oxygen is removed from the water, from which we can estimate the ocean uptake as a proxy as the aerobic metabolic rate of the fish. On top of that, we have two, no one, two. High-speed camera, so this camera can up go up to six thousand frames per second. So what it means, it takes six thousand picture within a second, and that allow us to really, really look into the details of how the fish are swimming. All this computer system will allow us to also automate the whole measurement system. And what that means is, if we need the fish to stay alone for a while. We can do so. We can put the whole system in automation mode, and we can walk away. And fish can exhibit their natural behavior in the swimming tunnel without the influence of human being. So now, do you want to see how the whole system look like if it's being fired up? Okay, that's what I'm gonna show next. So here we go. There's a system being fired up, literally. We fire a sheet of laser through the water, 
to allow a very large amount of light to go through the high-speed camera, and so we can see better. This picture looks a little bit like a sci-fi movie, but that's actually what we do in the lab. And in this system, the camera is mounted at the back. This laser sheet will measure both the water fluids as well as how fish are moving inside. And what is a day of life for a scientist like me look like when using this kind of a system and set up? And that is the actual photo of the scientist working in my Harvard lab here. And here I work with the other two great scientists as a team to understand the locomotion of the science. So we have one scientist sitting here and control the computer looking towards being measured from the laser sheet. There's a tiny fish here and that's the fluid being measured in the computer here. There's the other scientist at the back and he's very, very curious and poke his eye and carefully look into our experiment system. And don't worry, he wear a safety goggle so they protect his eye from being damaged by the laser, so he's safe and he's checking in the fish of how they are doing. So what is he actually seeing? Is that how fish swimming? And do you want to see it? We sustain a set pace of locomotion, just like what these fish are doing, swimming sustainably. And there's also a second mode of no commotion. After this sustained, let's have one more look. The second mode of fish swimming is called a burst swimming. Let's see what's the slight difference here. Let me put a video first and you can think about it. So the fish go forward and fall back and go forward a little bit. So in this mode of swimming, it's not so steady as what we see previously. So the fish can try to go forward, and then they fall back. So they will try to go forward and fall back. A human equivalent of this mode of locomotion is called, it's probably like to our running. So in some time we run it at a certain pace, we can go be faster. And our muscle feels so. We feel a little bit out of breath. And what do we do? We slow down our pace. And we might even revert back to the walking. And fish, when they swim at a high speed, they are doing the same thing. They're doing a burst forward swimming movement. And they will fall back, try to catch up in their breath a bit. And then they will keep going. And this cycling of going back and forth actually helps fish to swim at a high speed for a longer period. So again, this is just like we are going for a run on the park on the weekend. We run a little bit faster and then slow down, try to catch your breath. And this is all great when we do all these measurements within the laboratory experiment. But that's not the way to capture every fish on our planet. How can we study more fish to understand how universal the swimming behavior and locomotion gate is. And to understand that, we need to rely on a different technique, and which is what our lab are testing right now or at the moment. In here, we let the fish swim with a backpack. So where is that backpack? It's right here on the side of the fish body. This is why backpack. So what we do here is we allow the fish to sit in the fish swimming tunnel again and attach this backpack to the fish. Then we introduce certain water speed to it. See the fish is swimming inside. We snap backpack and the fish is carrying. It's recording the real-time data of how much, what's the frequency the tail is beating, where the fish is at, at a certain depth, and what is the temperature and even environmental oxygen level the fish is experiencing. And let's look at this video again. This little backpack is, record, is attached to a swimming fish. We can record the ocean consumption at the same time 
a snitch backpack is recording the no commotion gate, such as tail B frequency. So now with this backpack technology we call the fish tag, we can actually understand a bit of what they are doing in the wild. And fish prefer actually cool water, they don't like to warm food. And there is a data captured by a scientist that what they observe is when there's a warmer water on the top of the layer, and the fish will tend to slow down and they go deeper. They dive down. And the way for us to capture this data is actually rely on their backpack. As I was mentioning, a backpack can capture where the fish is in terms of the depth. It can also measure the water temperature around the fish. So in that tag, we see the fish is in warmer water and then they go deeper in this space. And this space here on the right hand side is more than like an experimental testing site. It's an aquaculture farm site, so where we have big, big fish open net pen and the fish are being farmed within. So with that backpack and our knowledge test in the lab, we can understand why the fish are doing this movement and how we can help in our aquaculture production process to make fish coping with the stress. At the very end, fish and our human athletes are not that different. We all use aerobic and anaerobic metabolism to fuel our locomotion. We can do a similar principle of testing for our human and fish athletes. Therefore, for our fundamental science, it can be really translated to benefit all aspects of our society. As for you, our future world leaders, some of you might be really, really into science already, and that's great, stay on that path. But if some of you are thinking, oh my god, I'm not really into science, does that mean I cannot make it? No, it's not, because all the discipline you learn at high school right now can all be applied to push the frontier of our human society, and our scientists, and these are great communicators to get our science out, to communicate the importance and implication of our science to the broader society. And then we can all make an informed decision. So this is Dr. Yang Fan Zhang. And I hope you learned from this short lecture today about how fish swim and how similar fish and human are actually they are and how the fundamental science can be translated to improve our life in all areas of our society. And I'm looking forward to joining you in one of the question and answer cell. I will be very happy to listen from every single one of you about the questions you have. I'm looking forward to see you.